Let's bring in now Keith Cohen. He's a former rocket scientist and editor of NASAWatch.com. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Absolutely. Why, thank you, Keith. Uh, you know, I really want to start on exactly that note. You know, the significance of China's Tianwen-1 lander uh, touching the surface of Mars, only the second country to put a rover there. Can you put this achievement into perspective for us? Well, you know, it, it is quite an achievement, uh, landing something uh, on Mars for the first time and then uh, a rover, which apparently is healthy, and having an, an orbiter in place. Um, the last time anybody did that was uh, when we did it like 50 years ago. So this is quite an accomplishment, and the sophistication of the rover uh, is definitely going to make a contribution to the understanding of Mars, the red planet. So, Keith, you know, I want to sort of get some of the, the movement of this, because once the lander entered Mars's atmosphere, it went through uh, what scientists call the seven minutes of terror, I believe. Could you describe that for us? What actually happens, and why is it so terrifying? Well, first of all, because Mars and Earth are usually about 20 minutes apart in terms of the time it takes for radio signals to travel, something has already happened on Mars. You won't know about it for 17 to 20 minutes. Mm. But during the time that you come through the atmosphere, the you know, there's heating of the heat shield, parachutes come out, a whole bunch of things have to happen perfectly. It's already happened by the time you hear about it. So it's sort of like you know, a, waiting to see who won the lottery. Hmm. And it's usually nerve-wracking every single time it happens. And what about that landing itself? Um, because we saw a similar technique with the Chang'e lunar mission, but the conditions on the moon and the conditions of Mars very different, right? Well, on the moon there's no atmosphere, so you can't use a parachute to slow down. Hmm. However, um, on Mars there's not just enough of an atmosphere to uh, put a parachute out to slow you down, but. After the parachute is let go, the landing is very similar. It was a rocket engine that's designed to just lower the spacecraft perfectly to its landing site. So um, what does China then hope to learn from this mission to Mars? What are some of the goals and how will this scholarship contribute to our overall knowledge of the red planet? Well, there's an orbiter orbiting Mars, so that will be looking down at the planet and its atmosphere, so that will be contributing uh, to the overall knowledge. The rover itself will be on the surface and will be able to do very close-up examinations of the surface, looking at the chemical composition, understanding whether possibly there's conditions that may have been there for life at some point. And again, as uh, NASA's, uh, the head of NASA's science program just congratulated uh, China on this accomplishment, this adds to the global body of knowledge. So we're, we're, we're all looking forward to seeing the scientific papers published. Mm. You know, it's such a busy week for China's space program. We saw the successful launch of the Tianhe Core Cabin, that's the main body uh, for China's space station, and now this. Uh, would you consider these quite big milestones for a relatively young space player? Yes, I would. And again, congratulations on both. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what can we expect, uh, do you think, from this particular mission? I think that uh, given that it's landed, the, uh, the hard part is over. Now the rover just has to drive down the little ramp and start doing its thing. Based on the experience of the American rovers, which have all landed, uh, you know, in a different way but in different places, once they start moving, they tend to last a lot longer than was designed. So right. to answer your question, who knows? Right. That's kind of the interesting part of this. There'll be some quick studies done right around the landing site, but sometimes the most important stuff will happen months down the road. So, again, we'll all be watching very, very intently over here. Exciting times ahead. Keith Carwin, thank you so much for your time and insight as always.